the Battle of Jia Qiao, also known as the Battle of Ji Bridge, was fought between the warlords Yu and Shao in Gong Sunzan in 191 in the late Eastern Han Dynasty. It was the first significant clash of arms between the rival warlords in the contest for dominion of Ji and Qing provinces in northern China. The site of the battle is generally considered to be a site east of Guangzhou County, Julu Commandery. Background Late in the winter of 191, following a victorious campaign against remnants of the Yellow Turban rebels, Gong Sun Zan took the pretext of his brother Gong Sun Yu's death in the Battle of Yang Cheng to declare war on Yu and Shao. His army marched southwest between the Qing and Yellow Rivers into Ji Province. Very quickly a number of cities under Yuan's control were compelled to change sides. Yuan Shao hurriedly made conciliatory gestures, in a bid to forestall a full-blown war. He gave his official position as Grand Administrator of Bo Hai to Gong Sun Fan, a distant relative of Gong Sun Zan. Gong Sun Fan, however, took the Bo Hai garrison to join his clansmen. The battle. Soon Yuan Shao himself came in force and the two sides met 40 kilometers south of Ji Bridge, a crossing on the Qing River. Gong Sun Zan's army had a reported strength of 40,000, consisting of 30,000 infantry and 10,000 cavalry. He arrayed his infantry in a square and divided his cavalry between the left and right wings. In the center were placed his white horse volunteers, an elite mounted unit which formed the core of his fighting force. Whilst the numbers may have exaggerated, their appearance must have been impressive. Records of Three Kingdoms describes how their flags and armor lit up heaven and earth. Though Yuan Shao's army was of comparable size, it consisted almost entirely of infantry. His commander Qu Yu Yi was placed at the vanguard with 800 crack troops and 1,000 crossbowmen. Behind them stood masses of foot soldiers, numbering in the tens of thousands, commanded by Yuan Shao himself. Observing that Yuan's vanguard was thinly spread, the experienced horseman Gong Sun Zan ordered a charge by his cavalry. The aim was to break the enemy line, destroying the core of an opposing army and then rolling up its retreating multitudes. Qu Yu Yi's men formed a shield wall and awaited the onslaught. When Gong Sun's cavalry was a mere ten paces away, the crossbowmen loosed waves of bolts, followed by the foot soldiers, who rose with their spears. After a general melee the front of Yu and Shao's line was littered with cut-down horses and Gong Sun's hands dead. Gong Sun's general Yang Gang was killed in the fighting. Yuan Shao's army is said to have taken 1,000 heads. Having failed to breach the enemy line, Gong Sun's cavalry wheeled around and streamed away from the battle, followed by the infantry. Gong Sun Zan attempted to regroup and hold the line of the Qing River. His rear guard clashed with Qu Yu Yi's men at Ji Bridge itself and were driven into retreat. The abandoned Gong Sun camp was quickly overrun, its yak tail standard lost. Seeing that Gong Sun was all but defeated, Yuan Shao advanced with a bodyguard of several tens of crossbowmen and a hundred men at arms. He was caught by surprise by 2,000 horsemen who had been detached from Gong Sun Zan's main force. According to the records of Three Kingdoms, the aide de camp Tian Feng was about to support Yuan Shao behind a low wall for refuge. Yuan threw his helmet to the ground and said, a real man should die in front of the ranks. To be idle behind a wall, that is no way to live. The enemy horsemen, ignorant of Yuan Shao's identity, were beginning to withdraw when Qu Yu Yi arrived on the scene to drive them away. This story, somewhat detached from the main battle sequence, emphasizes Yuan Shao's bravery. Aftermath The Battle of Jia Qiao halted the southern advance of Gong Sun Zan but it was by no means decisive in the protracted struggle between Gong Sun and Yuan, which lasted until 199. Gong Sun returned a year later, in the winter of 192, along the same route. Even though the battle was a setback for Gong Sun Zan, it did not impact significantly on his army. Many of the soldiers who fled must have found their way back to Gong Sun in the days and weeks after the battle. 
The battle is unique in that it is described in detail in records of three kingdoms. The arrangement of the armies and the tactics used, usually neglected by traditional Chinese histories, are reasonably clear. The battle demonstrates the ineffectiveness of even an experienced cavalry force against a disciplined infantry unit with competent leadership. It is also significant to note that although the numbers involved are very high, the actual fighting is decided by only a small elite portion of the entire army. Once the corps was defeated, the demoralized masses quickly follow.